Hello, this video discusses freefall and some of the ideas associated with freefall and how we can solve problems of freefalling objects. Okay, so a little bit of history. Uh, the first person to talk about the ideas of freefall was Aristotle, who was an ancient Greek philosopher. And he believed that um, objects with more mass would accelerate at a greater rate because the force on them is greater. And this is quite a straightforward kind of common sense idea. So if we imagine we have two objects, a small one and a large one. The weight of this one is reasonably small and the weight of this one is much larger. And Aristotle believed that because the weight of this one, the force on this one was greater, it would accelerate at a greater rate. Now that's quite an, an easy to understand common sense idea. And this idea stood for nearly 2000 years until Galileo came along and actually proved that Aristotle's ideas weren't actually quite correct. And this may be a little bit of an urban myth, but legend has it that Galileo uh, went up to the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa with two pieces of fruit, maybe a watermelon and a lemon or something like that. And he dropped the two pieces of fruit off the top of the Leaning Tower of Pisa to see what would happen, to test Aristotle's ideas. And he found that the two pieces of fruit hit the ground at the same time, roughly. And he did lots of other experiments, both real experiments and thought experiments, to try and verify these ideas that he was having. Because what he believed was that bodies under free fall will have the same rate of acceleration. They'll be accelerated by gravity, which is constant. And therefore, because gravity is constant for all objects, all of them will accelerate at the same rate. And this was accepted by Newton and others and, and went into the... Um, body of scientific knowledge but it wasn't until very recently that we were able to test this properly uh, eventually mankind found themselves uh, headed off to work to, to where there isn't any air because air is what disrupts this theory because it, obviously you've got an upward air resistance on objects that that that, um, that changes this so when we got to the moon the crew of Apollo 15 decided to do an experiment and this is the captain of the Apollo 15 missions and you can see in this hand he's holding a hammer and in this hand he's holding a feather. Now this is a very famous experiment and there are all sorts of video clips um, from the, with, with this footage on YouTube so you can have a look at this. It's called the Apollo 15 hammer and feather experiment. Um, and he dropped these two objects at the same time and they hit the ground just in front of his feet together. They fell at exactly the same rate. Now, obviously, they fell slower than on Earth, but the principle is the same. All objects falling under gravity or in free fall, as we say, will accelerate at the same rate. So let's have a look at what that means. OK, so free fall is a very specific term that we use where all of these conditions apply. OK, so in free fall, objects will fall under a constant acceleration. Now... You may have made the connection that actually if you've got constant acceleration you can use the equations of motion to solve problems which we'll do in a moment air resistance is ignored for all free fall equations the acceleration of the objects is due to gravity and that acceleration has a value of 9.81 meters per second squared because that's the value of the gravitational acceleration and it acts vertically downwards and also this acceleration is the same for all objects. This is fairly crucial. All objects, no matter their size, mass, shape, density, for freefall calculations, they will fall at the same rate of acceleration of 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so as long as we uh, fulfill all these conditions, we can say that the object is in freefall. So let's have a look at those ideas in practice. Here we've got um, a question which we're going to try and analyze and in doing so we're going to sort of draw out some of those ideas that we've just been talking about. So we're going to use the Suvat equations to solve this problem. They are slightly modified or simplified when we're talking about uh, basic free fall problems. So let's have a look at this one here. A stone is dropped from the top of a tower 25 meters high. How long does it take to reach the ground? Okay now there are some various things that we can look at in, inside this problem. So for example, 
the stone is dropped. It's not thrown, it's dropped. So um, if we imagine this stone being dropped from the top of this tower, um, effectively it's just let go. So the initial velocity of the stone is going to be zero. And then it's going to accelerate downwards at a rate of 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, now the issue with this is the direction. Okay, now the convention is that upwards directions are positive, so any of the vectors that point upwards are going to be positive, and any of the vectors that point downwards are going to be negative. So the acceleration is actually going to be minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Similarly, the stone is falling downwards through the air, and so the displacement is going to be minus 25 meters. Okay, because the tower is 25 meters high and it's falling all the way to the ground. So the displacement is going to be minus 25, the acceleration is going to be minus 9.81, and the initial velocity is going to be zero. So the question is, how long does it take to reach the ground? So if you um, have a look at the equations of motion, you will see that the one that we're going to need for this is this one. S equals ut plus a half times a t squared. Okay, now u is zero, and therefore this, this whole factor cancels out, because if u is zero, then zero times anything is zero, so this whole factor becomes zero and disappears. So we're left with s equals a half times a times t squared, but the acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared, which is gravity. So we can modify this equation slightly again, and we can say that the displacement is actually a half times g times t squared, where g is gravity, which we've uh, replaced for acceleration. So this equation here is a very useful equation and is actually called sometimes the freefall equation. So the displacement equals a half times gravity times the square of the time that it takes to fall um, is what we call the freefall equation, and that can be used to solve this problem actually. So we're looking for the time, how long does it take to reach the ground? So I'm going to rearrange this, so we get 2s, so that half comes up and becomes a 2 over there. We want to divide by g, and then we want to take the square root. Alright, so all of that will give us the time. Okay, so that means the time will then be square root of twice the displacement, which is actually minus 25, because it's falling downwards, divided by gravity, which is minus 9.81. Okay, and when you plug all that into the um, equation, you get an answer of 2.26 seconds, and you can check that on your calculator if you like. I think I've got it right. Okay, so this, this stone is going to take 2.2 seconds from the top of a 25 meter tower to fall to the ground. So you can see how powerful those predictive um, uh, analyses are on on these um, on these situations. <clears throat> okay, now that's a very simple one, and I've chosen that one because it draws out this free fall equation. But more generally, things aren't quite so simple. So let's have a look at another example. Um, here's a question which um, is slightly more difficult because the stone is thrown vertically upwards, so it's not dropped; it's actually thrown, and it's thrown with a speed of five meters per second from the ground. So here's the ground and it's being thrown upwards with a speed of 5 meters per second. And that's fine because we're going to say again that upward directions are positive. Okay, and downward vectors are, are negative. So the acceleration is actually going to be downwards. So that's going to have a value of minus 9.81 meters per second squared. And that's the acceleration. So that's the acceleration, that's the initial velocity. So it's going to go up in the air, and then it's going to come round and come back down. So the question says, what is the maximum height reached? Okay, so that is actually the displacement, what we're trying to find. How far up does it go? So in this, in this particular question, we need to use the full SUVAT. So we're going to start by writing down what we did when we were doing basic SUVAT calculations. All right, so we're going to write SUVAT in a vertical line, all five quantities, and figure out what we've got and what we need. So the initial velocity is five. All right, so that's plus five because it's going up vertically. Um, the displacement is what we're looking for. 
We know the acceleration, which is minus, because it's negative because it's acting in a downwards direction. 9.81 meters per second squared downwards, hence a negative sign. Now those are the only two things that we've got, so we need to find another one before we can do any SUVAC calculations. So we have a look back at the question, um, and if we read the question properly, we're looking for the maximum height reach, the maximum. So it heads up at five meters per second, it slows down, and at the maximum height it will actually stop instantaneously in the air and then head back down in the other direction. So at the maximum height it's going to stop. So if we just take the upward motion as the one we're analyzing, then V will actually be zero. Okay, because it will stop up right up there. So the final velocity of this will be zero. And now we've got our three, we can calculate the maximum height re reached. So we've got V, U, A, and we want T. So the equation that we're going to select is V squared is equal to U squared plus 2AS. I'm going to rearrange that for S. So we bring the U squared over to the other side and we get V squared minus U squared and then we divide by this 2A to give us S on its own. So the displacement is V squared minus U squared over 2A. And we're going to plug some numbers in there. V is 0, so V squared is 0. Um, U is 5, so that's 5 squared. And it's just that 5 squared, not minus 5 squared. That minus is separate. And then divided by 2 times minus 9.81. And here you can see why it's so important to get the signs right. Because... Um, if you were to ignore this minus sign, you're going to get completely the wrong answer because you're going to be divided by the wrong number. So, that's equal to S. And when you plug that into your calculator, you find that the displacement of this stone is going to be one point... Oops, sorry, that's actually not clear enough. It's, go, whoops, it's going to be um, one point to seven meters. I'll just fill this one in as well. Minus 9.81. Okay, there we go. So the displacement is going to be 1.27 meters. Okay, so that's the first bit. Uh, this second bit is a completely different part of the question. So we can do that now. So I'm going to just draw that line down there and then draw this line across here just to show what we're doing. So we've now got uh, the displacement as well. All right, so we can write that in there. And we've got various options now because we've got four, four things that we can use. But I'm going to, to slightly change this question. So I'm going to say, all right, how long is it in the air? So it starts going up at five meters per second. Now we're not going to get the answer if we go to the top and stop. We're going to get half the time that it's in the air. So what's going to happen if... Assuming that everything is symmetrical, which it is, it's going to come down again. And the final velocity, just before it hits the ground, is going to be minus 5 meters per second. All right, so V is going to be minus 5, whereas U is plus 5 because it's going up and then it's going down. So in this case, um, we're going to change this so that V is not, is not 0 anymore. For the second part of the question, we're going to take the entire motion into account so that V this final velocity is minus 5 meters per second. And we're going to work with that. All right, now what we want to find in this case is the time for how long is it in the air. <coughs> so we're looking at this one here. We've got U, V, A, and T. So the question, uh, sorry, the equation that we really want to use is V equals U plus A, T. So that's the one. We're going to rearrange that. So V minus U divided by this A is going to give us t. Okay, so let's have a quick look at that. And this is where the signs come into themselves again. So make sure you've got your signs right before you start substituting numbers. So v is minus 5 because it's heading downwards. u is 5, but it's minus this 5. So minus 5, minus 5, divided by a which is minus 9.81 because gravity is the acceleration and it always acts downwards. And that's equal to the total time that the object is in the air. 
right? And when you plug all that lot into the calculator, you effectively get minus 10 over minus 9.81, which works out at 1.02 seconds. So the time that the object is in the air is 1.02 seconds. So you can see from these problems that for simple problems where the object is dropped, you can use this free fall equation here because u is zero and g takes the place of the acceleration here because the acceleration is due to gravity. In more complicated problems, you need to make sure that you take account of the signs because some vectors are going up and some vectors are going down. Choose a positive direction and then do the full SUVAT in order to find the right answers. Okay. That's it. Thank you very much.